Welcome back to Composing for Orchestra. We are still in part A, which is notation. Don't neglect notation, it's so important, but we have moved over from kind of the, the severe part, which is, you know, like accurately the big details, you know, the big picture. And we're talking about kind of like personal taste, but it's almost necessary. I don't even know if it's my personal taste, but you can let me know in the comments if some of the things you don't personally do yourself. Um, we're going to be talking about the notes that I have on here and specifically things, tasks that I leave for myself as well as doubts. So what do I mean? So you'll see at the bottom here, it's a little bit cut off, but I give myself information to help myself out, okay? So when you're a composer, it's kind of like a split personality. I don't know if it's offensive to say these things. <laughs> but it kind of is because there's kind of the creator and then there's the executor. I don't know how you say this in English. But there's the person with you <laughs> who has to kind of finesse. So you might have a time crunch or you might be wanting to focus on bigger details when you orchestrate and you might have doubts. So look over here. What does it say? It's hard to read. Uh, would prefer to have the upper B flat in violas, something more. Let me look at my, uh, my hard copy. Reinforced more, okay? reinforced more. So I have the B flat here. So when I see this, and this is kind of like for the stage I'm in now, which is kind of the revision or rather I'm done for revision, but review. So I have a note here. We prefer to have the upper B flat and violas reinforced more. Okay. So you gotta be specific. Um, there is a star here, but there's two stars. And I don't like putting asterisks in the score. I, it, I don't like it. <laughs> But you can do it. Just make sure you take it out for the final copy, for the typed up copy. Um, but we prefer to have the upper B-flat and violas reinforced more. So we have the B-flat here. So this, that means this sounding B-flat. I was concerned that it would not be heard because the violas are divisi, though I did put full resonant tone. So they, they know how to work. Violas, in French we say il bus. I mean, they know how to work, okay? They can work, they can do magic, okay? Violas, I, I think, are really the key to successful writing for the viola, viola as well as French horns, which we're going to get to shortly in a subsequent video, are really kind of the keys, the clay, as we say in French. Though, of course, there's other, there's many, many keys. But, so, let's imagine right now that I was kind of reviewing this I would look for the B-flat. Where is the B-flat represented? Well, yes, it is in the opening of the melody for the oboes. Right away, I know that the, the trumpets are, I would assume that they're in unison, and then I just confirm, because it is, as we talked about, uh, I'm going to sound a second lower. So yeah, they have the B-flats as well. But that B-flat, though it will kind of rest in the ear, because it's four chains prolonged, it's chord note equals 64, so it's, D, so it's rather slow. Uh, it may not be enough to create the balance that you're looking for. That's your personal choice. But um, if I look a little bit deeper, I see that the French horns are in unison and they're playing a concert B-flat. Remember, written F means concert B-flat. And I don't think that I need any more B-flat. So what I would then do is just kind of cross this off. But, you know, it's good to, to write down these notes. Okay. Um, what is over here? I think at a certain point I switched to writing in French on my notes. Like I think in French now because I spent five years studying in Paris. So now like my musical brain is in French. So you can see a transition took place in this work because here it says um, les clarinettes et les bassons. So it means the clarinets and the bassoons. Um, so I had, I had a question mark. So it means there's something, no, uh, uh, there's no issue for me here. So I would cross it out. And a lot of things kind of get worked out later because as you write your work, you compose your work, as you orchestrate, you're going to become better at hearing your work. 
like your orchestration just improves just having to write for orchestra. It's the best way to compose for orchestra. So of course it'd be nice to hear your work. In the absence of that, the best way actually is harmony. Harmony is key. It's not orchestration, it's harmony. Orchestration is actually harmony, just a little more advanced. Harmony is the key to better orchestration, aside from hearing your own work performed, ideally live or rehearsed. So um, here I say slurring for flutes and violins. So the flute is continuous slur. Definitely doable. It's not that loud. You know, they do have to breathe. And maybe I was concerned that the flute, the flute and the violins wouldn't sound congruent, like, you know, be some gaps. So something I want to look at, I don't know. Uh, with the violins, you could put a whole slur, but I actually am curious if anyone who is watching this is a um, string player, because it's been a long time since I played cello, what the best practice is. Because I want this to be liquid smooth. I want this to feel like it's going to be slurred the whole time, but there's obviously no way that the violin is going to be able to do that all in one bow, certainly not with the crescendo marking here. And the decrescendo, which is missing. Somebody, ah, I'm very upset here. A lot of details are missing here. That's why we're doing this video. It's not for you, it's for me. Just kidding. Um, so something definitely I'm interested in knowing more about. I have to say, though, I did write a trio recently for two violins and um, flute. At my um, a recital I did in Paris, composition recital about 2021, summer 2021. You know, during peak COVID time. <laughs> but I guess it was summer. It's a little bit better. And I found I get very good results by kind of thinking, imagining the bow strokes. Instead of just putting one lopsided um, slur. So here I'm just concerned that, you know, they don't match. But I, I think it's fine. One thing I don't think I emphasize fully enough is that another purpose is to have your doubts here. And so, yeah, I had doubts. And, you know, you just revisit them later because you don't want to get... The problem is if you look at the doubts right away, you're going to spend a lot of time. So it's in sort of hierarchy of order. So the most important was noting what I thought was the most important. And then should I have time, which I will make the time for because I care, I want it to be sound awesome, I will address these doubts. We're vastly ending the first large part of this series, which of course is notation. The final video of this first part, before we move on to orchestration, will be um, uh, notating the rest, notating silence. See you very shortly. <laughs>